My name is Marina Ortega, and I'm a PA at UCSF, and I work in endocrine surgery and endocrinology. At the time when I thought about going to school, I was to study medicine. I was working in the nonprofit sector. I was working um, in social justice organizations, trying to help people. And I was working in an office, and I felt really removed from the people we were trying to help. And at the same time, on my, in my personal life, I was taking a course in wilderness first res, as a first responder. And I also became a search and wilderness search and rescuer. And in all of those classes, everybody was, there was everything. There were EMTs and firefighters and physicians and physician assistants and nurse practitioners. And I just remember they, a few of them were saying, you're one of us, you should be one of us. I first learned about PAs through my own PA. So the physician I used to see was often very busy. And if I wanted to be seen um, right away, I would see her PA. And I came to like him a lot more than her. And so then I would just call and make appointments with him. And interesting, it would happen to be a very similar time where I was now thinking about medicine. And he also then motivated me to... Uh, tried to go down the path of becoming a PA. He's like, you should try it. And he would talk, he talked to me about his own path. And so it was just an experience of my own uh, PA as a in health. To get into PA school, you have to have a lot, many, many hours of experience, uh, pay, direct patient experience. And so luckily I had friends, well, one in particular who was a pharmaceutical sales rep and lucky for me, he knew a lot of PAs. And so he started introducing me to different people. And the thing is, is that when you're trying to do something and you feel so insecure about it, it's really scary to even call somebody who's expecting your call. And so I uh, finally got the courage and called a few people and they're all so helpful. And so I got invited to uh, come and be a, this like ad hoc a uh, medical assistant at a doctor's office in San Francisco where they let me just do as much as possible and taught me as much as possible. And so I did a lot of volunteer work that way. When you decide you're going to do this, um, then you have to, if you haven't had the pre-med courses, you have to start from square one. And square one is taking basic anatomy and basic uh, you have to take statistics and all of these courses. I did courses within the Peralta College system and uh, all along the way, uh, I was working full time. So these were evening or weekend courses that I was taking. There were times on a Saturday where I would be hour after hour trying to work through these statistics problems. And you think, what, why are you doing this? You're, what is this for? And such few people get into PA school anyway. And it seems so far away from ever becoming a PA. So it was just really, it takes a lot of courage and I think resilience and you surprise yourself sometimes. I was very lucky I got accepted into two programs, uh, one in uh, Oregon Pacific University and Samuel Merritt University. And Samuel Merritt University is in Oakland, so I decided to stay local. The actual, um, PA curriculum, the course was two and a half years, but it was so many, many years before that trying to even get into a PA program. In some ways, it was much harder for me to get into PA school than PA school itself. And PA school was really difficult for me. I don't come from money. I don't, you know, any money I make is the only money I'm ever going to have in life. And so amassing so much debt to go to PA school was really scary and it was just by chance when I was doing my own research that I stumbled across the National Health Service Corps website and I saw that they do loan repayment and that they offer also a scholarship. In the end, I ended up applying to and I, I'm a National Health Service Corps scholar. I received that scholarship which paid for all of my school. Most people in my class have of mass loans and either they go off to work at a federally qualified health center and apply for loan forgiveness or they uh, work and make as much money as possible and start paying off their loans themselves 
it's very rare to meet any student who had the money or saved the money or parents had the money to pay for their school. Most people don't realize that everyone goes into debt and that because the, there's so many avenues for paying off that debt, um, they should still pursue it because the incomes are so high and growing. I do believe that the biggest obstacle is fear. It's fear of how are you going to pay for it? It's fear of how are you going to get through the class in front of you? How are you going to get through anatomy and you're not even in PA school? If you don't come from an upbringing where it's just second nature and this is what you're doing, which I didn't, then you really have to, you have to muster some courage deep inside somehow. And then there was all these voices in your head saying, you're not going to be able to do it. You're not going to make it. And so just trying to quiet those voices, forget the people in, out in the world who are going to tell you, just don't do it. You could just do another job. Why are you doing this? Um, your own voice is really telling you that you can't do it. So I think fear is the biggest obstacle. Fear was the biggest obstacle for me. So in your final year as a PA, you have to do, you have to go work in surgery and primary care and you have to kind of rotate through all these different areas of medicine to complete your training. So I started reaching out, literally cold calling um, some places where I wanted to uh, go do six weeks of practice in my, uh, as a preceptorship. And uh, people wouldn't call back. Who is this person that says, can I come spend six weeks and, and work with you? But I was very persistent. And the director of uh, PAs and nurse practitioners, he called me back. He said, you've left three messages for me. You must really want to come here. And so uh, I did. And it became a job offer I, in being able to use that as a reference was really helpful to then apply to some of these other places. And so I, I, I worked really hard while I was in school to interview in the format that was school and those and that format is really the preceptorships because they get to see you for six weeks and if they like you they're going to make you a job offer and so i love being a pa to be able to help other people become a pa as crazy as that sounds um and i love being a pa because it really brings me directly in line with my values and so I work really hard to make sure that everybody receives excellent care. And that is really rewarding because while it sounds obvious, in fact, people who are underrepresented require a lot more work. And I love that. I love that I'm wide awake to that and that I get to make sure that they have an excellent experience. So the most challenging part is to really try, is you're working in teams of people and to really trying to bring the voice and the experiences of underserved people um, to the forefront. The challenge is now very exciting time to address that challenge uh, because there is so much focus on equity. And so what I find the most challenging is about to become the most exciting probably time of my career in my lifetime at right now. The most surprising thing about becoming a PA to me was how, how, how wide the reputation is now. It's very well known. You don't have to explain to too many people what a PA is. I, I love that everyone talks about PAs working to the top of their license, and which means that they really understand the role of PA and the value that, that PAs bring. And the same thing goes with salaries. The salaries have just continue to just go up and up and up really uh, every year, even in primary care for PAs. If you're afraid, you're in good company, <laughs> but don't let it stop you. Look, seek people, you know, you won't make it on your own. If you're in a class that's difficult, you just have to be willing to meet with the teacher you know, any of the instructors, they're there to help, they want to help. So you have to really muster the courage. Don't, you'll be afraid, but you should do it anyway. And all along the way, you just need to try to do everything you can to meet people who have walked in your shoes. And there are people who have walked in your shoes. There are a lot of people who are terrified of the cost, 
who were terrified of the next class they were going to take. There are a lot of people who are willing to help you and mentor you and give you advice and introduce you to people. And I know because a lot of people did that for me and now I'm paying it back in droves. Thank you.